evening. I'm Charlie Wall, president of Massasoit Community College, and a warm welcome to Massasoit's Buckley Performing Arts Center for a mayoral candidates debate between Bill Carpenter, Mayor of Brockton, and Chris McMillan, former Ward City uh, Ward 7 City Councilor. Tonight's debate is sponsored by the Enterprise and WATD Radio and hosted, of course, by uh, Massasoit Community College. The debate is currently being broadcast live on Monday Night Talk with Kevin Tautry on 95.9 WATD FM and on the Massasoit TV channel, Channel 22, in Brockton. So hello to all of you who are tuned in with us this evening, along with, of course, our uh, audience in the Buckley Theater. Uh, later, Brockton Community Access will be broadcasting this debate uh, in, later again in this week, as I say. I don't need to tell the audience, uh, either at home or here, about the importance of what we're doing this evening. This is grassroots democracy. This is an opportunity for the candidates to engage the issues, each other, and all of us. And please, everyone at home and here, please vote. There's nothing more important. So I'd like to turn the program over now to Christine James, Managing Editor at WATD, who will be tonight's moderator. Christine? Good evening, everyone, and welcome to a WATD political forum that we're co-sponsoring here with the Enterprise newspaper and, of course, and Massasoit. It's going to be an interesting evening. Those of you who are regular listeners know we love our politics and we love to do political forums. This is being broadcast live on WATD. It will be up on our website uh, later on. You can listen to it again in its entirety. We're streaming as well, and you'll hear selected cuts tomorrow morning during our morning drive news. Now, the first thing I like to do is decide what the opening and closing order will be for both candidates tonight. This is how we do it. Low tech. This is the official WATD newsroom koozie. I've written the names of both candidates here, and this will decide their opening and closing statements. So we're going to begin with Chris McMillan, and just to show you, I have both names on here, and then Mayor Bill Carpenter. So that's how we will open, and we reverse the order at the end. So why don't we do this? Why don't we bring the two candidates out here, and then I'll tell you a little bit more about how the format will work tonight. Let's bring out Mayor Bill Carpenter and Chris McMillan. Thank you. Uh, joining me to ask questions tonight, let me introduce the panel over there, that attractive group of people. That's Charles Mathewson from WATD, one of our ACE reporters. Next to him, Mark Lindy from Brockton Community Access, who is also a media teacher here or professor at Massasoit. Thanks for joining us. Ed Donga from the Enterprise newspaper is the third gentleman there with a the red tie. He's going to be asking questions as well. And Emily Reynolds from The Spark. That's an online news organization. So if you listen to our uh, WATD forums, you know that we always have the same format. We ask the candidates to have prepared opening and closing statements, no longer than two minutes. In between, we ask a round of questions, and we ask the candidates, please try to keep your answer to a minute and under. If you go over, you get a warning, and then if you get the warning and you keep talking, you get the bell. The bell means you're done. Okay? Looks friendly, doesn't it? Tulip little lady on there and the ladybug, but when she rings, you got to stop talking. Helping us keep time tonight here, one of our news people, and that's Jeffrey Morrissey there. He's the official timer, and he'll be signaling me. Uh, when green is on, it means you can keep talking. Yellow means you've got about 15 seconds, and red means you're done. We also like to have a lightning round during these forums. That's my favorite part, because that's the part where we get to ask candidates for office a question where the answer has to either be yes or no, and that's not yes or no with an explanation, it's yes or no, or one or two sentences and the reporters will decide what they want. We find this is almost impossible for anybody running for office, so this is my favorite part of the evening as usual. And if we have time, we'll give the candidates a chance to ask each other a question. 
Now, as moderator, I always reserve the right to ask questions, to ask a follow-up question, or to tell people to get to the point. So this is something we like to just have it really tight answers to get in there and just make your point and get to the point. Uh, something else I want to I want to mention, I know this is a live forum and people get very excited about politics. And I know sometimes politics is messy, sometimes it's loud, sometimes it gets a little crazy. Here's what I'm asking for. <coughs> Free speech means everybody gets a chance to speak and that means everybody gets a chance to listen to the candidates. If I have to keep telling a certain person to be quiet, you will be escorted out of here. I spoke with the uh, handsome police officer at the beginning of this evening. That was Officer Arojo from Massasoit. And he also said, if people here are acting up, you will be escorted out. So we're not going to have a few people interrupt or disrupt this forum for everybody. So that's something I want to make sure that people get a chance to listen. This is why we do a forum, <coughs> not a strict debate, because with a forum, we have a little bit more leeway to find out where candidates really stand on the answers. So what I'd like to do now is go to our opening statements. Again, remember, no longer than two minutes, but can be as short as you want. And we'll say good evening, and we'll start with Chris McMillan. Good evening. Thank you, Christine. <laughs> I want to thank WATD, Massasoit Community College, the Enterprise, and Dr. Wall for introducing us, and Christine for moderating, and the members of the panel. My name is Chris McMillan. I put myself in this race uh, because I felt that the city needed to change. And this is exactly why the mayor put himself in the race two years ago. And a little bit of background on myself is that I was a lifelong resident of the city of Brockton. I was a city councilor for Ward 7 for eight years. I was elected by my peers as a council president in 2010. Now, as a councilor, I had helped bring in a lot of business to Ward 7. We had a lot of empty buildings. I helped bring in Northeast Electric headquarters, Crown Uniforms and Linens headquarters, and I also worked with the um, New England development to bring in the market basket, which all total uh, have, commit, have uh, come in with about 600 jobs. Uh, as a counselor also, I helped create, uh, have helped uh, get, uh, gain money from, the, uh, from HUD to give to a North Little League to build new fields. And I also helped with, the, with the, some other money from HUD to create the girls' softball fields and the girls' softball head, uh, home, uh, which they were looking for quite, uh, quite a bit, quite a long time. <coughs> As a uh, counselor, I was also on many boards, uh, the building committee for the George and the Baker School, the Green Roof subcommittees. Uh, little, I was a Little League coach for 18 years, and along with the board being a board member. So after knocking on doors the last uh, few months, uh, we got into the race back in July. Uh, it's obvious that these people uh, the residents here are looking for a change. <coughs> we need change right now. Um, there are great uh, amount of, a lot of great people I was uh, introduced to, and I'm here to help. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was candidate Chris McMillan. Now we're going to go to Mayor, the incumbent, Bill Carpenter, your opening statement. Well, good evening, everyone, and for those of you here in the audience and those listening at home, I, I appreciate the interest and the participation. I took office as your mayor 22 months ago, and we immediately began building a team and rebuilding a city. In just 22 months, we have developed additional revenues to reduce the property tax burden. We have invested in information technology to make city government more accessible, efficient, and accountable. We have revitalized the city's economy, and for the first time in a long time, we're seeing private investment in our downtown. We have fulfilled our commitment to diversity in both hiring and appointments. We've taken a leadership role in battling the opiate addiction crisis, including my being the only mayor selected by Governor Baker to serve on his opioid working group, and my role in helping to found the state's fourth recovery high school for teenagers battling substance abuse. And we are stabilizing neighborhoods, from investing in parks and playgrounds to targeting the blight of vacant properties. And most importantly, we are fighting crime. We have brought new strategies, new technology, and new officers to the fight, and we show up for the fight every day. Over the next hour, I hope to have the opportunity to discuss in more detail all of these initiatives and uh, look forward to participating. Thank you. 
Thank you. We just heard the opening statements from the candidates. Now we're going to go to our reporters, and we're going to start with, uh, let's start with Emily Reynolds from The Spark. Your questions for the candidates, and which candidate you'd like to start with. Okay, and let's direct that towards uh, Mayor Bill Carpenter. Well, Emily, uh, homelessness, you know, is clearly a challenge of which Brockton uh, bears an unfair proportion of the burden for the Metro South area. When I speak with, um, when I speak with our police officers and, and people out on the front lines, they tell me that at least 80% of the homeless population in Brockton is not actually from Brockton. We have three hotels full of homeless families and over 80 scattered sites throughout the city. Uh, the financial burden is significant and there is a cost also with public safety. Uh, the, the answers are long term. We need to relocate that uh, Main Spring shelter off of North Main Street. It's a detriment to the business district downtown and I'm working quietly behind the scenes with Father Bills towards that goal. And we also need a, a daytime center that provides real services so that we don't have 100 people hanging out in the park at 7 o'clock every morning. And I okay. believe that the final Five point... Five seconds. Along with many mayors across the country, I have signed a pledge and made a commitment to end veterans' homelessness in our city. Thank you very much. That was Mayor Bill Carpenter. We want to go now to Chris McMillan. Same, same question. Do you need the question repeated or do you want to just go to the question, Chris? No, the uh, homeless, uh, you know, the, the homeless people have a, uh, um, a bad rap right now. There's a lot of people that are homeless that are, have un fallen on unfortunate ways. We need as a, com as a community to reach out to them and have a more community outreach for them. Um, I spoke with a, bunch, a couple of pastors at Universal Church. We have uh, meetings there on Friday mornings. Uh, I guess Mr. Carpenter, uh, Mayor Carpenter was invited, but he did not attend. Uh, but anyways... They're looking for a place to go. They're looking for something to have a facility to go to outside of the park next door. They don't want to be out there. There's a, a bad image for the, for the uh, homeless, and a lot of people just think they're all, uh, all drugged, drugged out and you know, have alcohol problems, but they're not. They've fallen on uh, bad, hard times, and we're here to reach out, and we're here to help them. So I, w I w wor will work with the pastors and create a community center, and this is what I've been saying with my platform, is to open up a community center along with uh, for the kids and for the for learning for a job training so that's one thing I'm going to be doing yeah. thank you thank you <laughs> that was Chris McMillan now we're going to go to Ed Donga of the Brockton Enterprise newspaper your questions for the candidates <coughs> Okay. <laughs> Let's start with uh, Chris McMillan this time. Well, I, my ideal Saturday night out in Brockton is most likely uh, was I work a third shift, so I usually don't go out on, uh, at nights. But if I were to on my days off, I will, I'd love, love to take my wife and out to dinner uh, to George's Cafe. Uh, that's another thing we say we see uh, it's failing right now. We fall we fall in short. There's not a really uh, a super restaurant to go to. George's is great. Don't get me wrong but we need more restaurants in here, and that's what we're hoping to get when I become mayor. So a Saturday night is to go out to dinner with my wife, uh, the Georges, and uh, just take up, take out the scene and talk to people while we're there. That's all. Interaction. Same question for Mayor Bill Carpenter. Well, I think that <coughs> the quality of life here in Brockton is great. The positives far outweigh the negatives uh, in terms of uh, living here in the city. Uh, a Saturday night, I guess, involves a pizza somewhere, probably a <laughs> restaurant that has the word cafe in it. So Cape Cod Cafe, George's Cafe, Home Cafe, some place with the word cafe in it. Um, but the strength of this city is its people and its diversity. That's what makes Brock Brockton a great place. And I can't tell you how many times I've seen when one resident or one family runs into any type of trouble or difficulty, the way the residents of this city will rally around them and support them. And I've seen it time after time after time. So the strength of this city is the people of this city. Thank you. That was Mayor Bill Carpenter. 
Now we're going to go to our next question, and we've got Mark Lindy from BCA. Your questions for the candidate. Excuse me. So do you want to start with, because we started with Chris last time, why don't we start with Bill Carpenter first? The new, new technology is not actually the old technology. Um, we used to have a license want. plate spotters. Oh, Sorry, we, I was going to start with, I would like no, to No, that's okay, you're going, Chris, go right ahead. Okay, Bart. there you go. I'll let you go next time. All right, thanks. <laughs> I'm sorry, I thought, he, I thought he said it was me. That's okay. But uh, the license plate spotter is one technology that we need to bring back here. Uh, we also need to bring back a lot of community programs that we, didn't, we are missing far as police, but as far as the technology goes, number one I would bring back is the license plate spotter to assist the police department to uh, identify any, uh, anyone driving with uh, unregistered vehicles, uh, lo suspended license and so on, uh, or if they're wanted for a warrant for their arrest. So that would help them out uh, quite, a, quite a bit. I don't know why it went away. We had uh, one vehicle, it was $20,000 for that vehicle, uh, but I'd like to see it uh, brought into part of the program, and I know that we had the use, when I was a council, we had the, uh, a, a reactive tool called the shot spotter, and I know the, uh, the mayor has expanded on that along with the approval of the city council, but that's just a reactive tool right now, and uh, those, are, those are technologies that uh, will be working, but for my key, I'm gonna key in on is uh, working with the, with the detectives, working with the, with the uh, captains to improve the technology. The, you know, the computers in the, in the vehicles and so on. Five so. seconds. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Bill Carpenter. <clears throat> well, I can tell you what we've been doing for the past 22 months. We've uh, instituted proactive patrols to go out and seek out street-level crime, like uh, street-level drug dealing and prostitution. We've created a motorcycle unit that gives us great versatility and is a great crime-fighting tool and also improves our presence. I brought back bicycle patrols for the first time in eight years, concentrating on parks, playgrounds, and the business districts. We're investing in technology, not just ShotSpotter. Chris, the pilot program of ShotSpotter from your city council eight years ago was a one-time purchase, never maintained, never expanded upon, and over the eight years, the technology completely passed it by with updates, and uh, the equipment was, uh, half of it was not working. So the uh, shot spotter that we've got now is far more effective and five times the size. And most importantly, we're putting more boots on the ground. We're in the process of hiring 21 new police officers. <laughs> when I took office, we had 177 officers. In January, we'll have 196, the highest staffing in over 25 years in this city. Okay. A lot of excitement here tonight. Here in Brockton, if you're just turning in, it's the Brockton mayoral race. We've got the incumbent, that's Bill Carpenter, and you have the challenger, Chris McMillan, just reminding folks at home. We have a live audience here tonight. That's what all the enthusiasm is about. So <laughs> it's great to get out here and show that you support the process. Charles Mathewson from WATD. Questions for the candidate. You said that you would give more money, for instance, to water mains rates and service interruption. Shows the need for Silver Lake infrastructure work. Bill? You support the gas-fired electric plant and the casino. What will you do if that anticipated revenue doesn't materialize? Well, we're also developing other sources of revenue. This past year, uh, we sold off uh, $1.5 million worth of surplus city property that was just lying idle. And not only do we raise the $1.5 million, but we put all that property back on the tax rolls. Those properties will generate about half a million dollars a year in taxes when they're redeveloped. Uh, we're looking to other sources uh, for revenue also. We've uh, instituted uh, fees for the electronic billboards. Uh, we have a solar project going in that'll generate between a quarter and a half a million dollars per year to the city. But there's no question, $4 million a year guaranteed from an electric power plant, $82.85 million guaranteed in the first 20 years a casino that if it is sited here in the city 
will generate $13 million per year for the city. And I've said what we'll do. I've said what we'll do with that money. It will be invested on roads, police officers, firefighters, and teachers. That's what we'll do with that money. Charles Mathewson, question Chris, for Chris McMillan. Chris, you oppose both of those projects, the casino and the electric plant. Correct. What would you do to get the money the city needs? I would uh, work to expand the, the wastewater treatment plant. And uh, the company called Nefco runs a pellet plant with fertilizer in Quincy. They use the uh, Deer Island waste for their we can expand that and use it for profit. Uh, they strip it down over the, on rails, which is right across the street from where the proposed power plant is going to be, which I hope to expand the wastewater plant. And it's also going to create a lot of jobs. It's going to create a lot of uh, construction jobs while we're upgrading it. It's going to create a lot of jobs that we, when we start it up. So those are one, well, that's one thing. Uh, with the casino part of it, it's owned by a private property, uh, which is Mr. Carney. I would like to approach him and try to bring in something that's going to be worth the, the residents, the, or good for the residents, which is going to, I want to do, is a sports dome in there for the kids so they can play at, at night. I want to do also a, a, a Spaniel Hall style buildings there where they have multiple restaurants and, and shops there where people can enjoy the night. You ask what we want to do on a Saturday night, there you have it right there. If we build that, they will come. Five seconds. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Let's go back now to Emily Reynolds from The Spark. Your questions for our candidates tonight. Next question, you're both candidates. Uh, you've both said that you want to make Brockton more small business friendly, but as someone who recently started a small business in Brockton, I can say it was difficult to find resources to help with the process and with finding funding sources. What is your specific plan for helping aspiring small business owners in the city, and what's the draw to Brockton as opposed to a neighboring town? And let's start with Chris McMillan this time. Okay. The, to uh, attract, to, for small business, I've been knocking on the doors and talking, speaking with the small business. They're very upset right now. Um, the fees just went up again on their permits and all the, all the, for the Board of Health permits and so on. So they're not happy about it. They don't feel Brockton is a friendly city to have a, have a business in. That's something that I want to uh, pull back from this and, wrote, and bring it back to the normal. One of the, one of the fees went from $25 to $125. And these restaurants and, and business owners, they're day to day. You know, depending on who comes in, um, as as a, uh, as a as a as a mayor, you have to reach out to these communities. And Emily, I uh, kind of forgot your question. <laughs> Sorry about the. Can you repeat that again? Sorry. Uh, about why? Um, what's your specific plan to help small businesses? Right. And uh, my my plan is to create a a, uh, a team along with the planning department because we have now a planner and a junior planner. Let's create a team that's going to reach out to the businesses. Uh, I know there's a there's a business directory that was just put out by the mayor, but it was being implemented when I was a city council for the B21, Five they were working seconds. on it, and they were to uh, having it uh, translated into different, uh, different languages, so uh, that's something that we have to reach out. Thank you. That was five Thank seconds. you. I got the bell. All right. My friend, the bell. I wasn't kidding about the bell. It's okay. I'm used to it. I'll tell you at the end of the <coughs> forum which local politician has had the bell the most. See, that'll keep you interested. Now let's go, let's go to Bill Carpin. Remember, too, if you're asked a question during the forum and you feel like, well, I didn't get a chance to explain that fully, sure. or I want to use that more, you can always use that two minutes at the end to put that in there, however you want to do that. So well, let's go to Bill Carpenter. Same question. Well, economic development has been one of our top priorities of our first term. I can tell you some of the things that we have been doing. We're streamlining city government, el eliminating red tape, and make it, making it easier to navigate your way through city government. It was nice of Chris to mention the small business guide that we just put out. I agree, the future of our city's economy, the growth in our local economy, will be based upon small businesses, and we're supporting all small businesses, including my minority-owned businesses, women-owned businesses, and immigrant-owned businesses, because that's where the fastest growth is right now. We hired a Main Street manager. He's working with small businesses up and down the Main Street corridor every day. In conjunction with that, we've partnered with Southeastern Economic Development on a microloan program for small loans for businesses who can't qualify for traditional bank financing. And we're putting permits and licenses one by one online so business owners don't have to leave their business to come in and fill out an application. They'll be able to download it online. Thank you. 
That was Mayor Bill Carpenter. Now we're going to get ahead to the representative here from the Brockton Enterprise, and that's Ed Donga. Questions for the candidates tonight. And this time we will start with uh, the Mayor Bill Carpenter. That will be directed to your first question. Thank you. Uh, in the last several months, we've had a few, uh, handful of high-profile gun, gun violence incidents. So my question for both candidates is, if, uh, as mayor, what would you do specifically to reduce gun violence in this community? Is that me first? Yes, please. Well, we're doing a lot to reduce gun violence. Since July 1st, between the Brockton Police and the State Police, we've taken over 40 illegal guns off the streets of the city. 40 guns in 40 months off the streets of this, in four months, off the streets of this city. Uh, the problems and the challenges we face, uh, we get the gun off the street, but the next day the judge puts the guy who had the gun right back on the street. And our police officers can't control that. We have instituted shot spotter that will now get us to those shot fired calls much faster and to an exact location, dramatically increasing our police officers' opportunity, not just to maybe get the perpetrator, but to identify witnesses because we know witnesses disappear almost as fast as perpetrators. And again, more boots on the ground will make a difference and those reinforcements are coming as soon as uh, next week when we have nine cadets graduate from the academy. Thank you, that was Mayor Bill Carpenter. Same question directed to Chris McMillan. Yes, same question. We need to uh, reach out to the, with, the, uh, with the kids, uh, have more community programs initiated, have police officers out there. Uh, I, know, I know we, we want more boots on the ground, but we have to be able to afford them. Unfortunately, uh, we have the, well, what's good, we have the nine cadets coming out. Well, it's unfortunate that the, the new cadets that are supposed to come in, uh, the rest of the 21, are not certified by the, by the chief financial officer. We're going to start them in the academy in, ju in January, start the process. By the time they get into the academy, the fiscal year 2016 is only certified. Uh, we have an issue, I have an issue with that because while they're in the academy, July 1st, we don't have the money for them, they're going to get laid off. So uh, as far as uh, getting the guns off the street, community outreach programs with the youth and the young adults and making sure that they, you know, everyone is, is proactive, the neighbors starting up all, all these programs that were no longer in, in there as far as community outreach goes. So that's, that's what I'll be doing as mayor. Thank you. Thank you, that was Chris McMillan. Now we're gonna move on to Mark Lindy, the director of Brockton Community Access. Questions for the candidates. Yes, this question is for both candidates. Uh, as you both know, the mayor of the city of Brockton is the chairman of the Brockton School Committee as well as his city side duties. Or Brockton has a great educational system and funding is always an issue and always a problem. What will you do specifically to ensure that Brockton gets adequate resources, especially at the time that the state is assessing whether or not to change the education funding formula? And let's start with Chris McMillan this time. Well, I'll be working with the state hand in hand along with the state representatives, uh, anyone up the, uh, in the senator, a new senator coming in, and, and hopefully it's Mike Brady. Um, we will have, uh, we're working with this, to get the teachers back in, we have to bring in the teachers. Um, the schools, are, we had layoffs, even though uh, the mayor claims he added $9 million, as he, did, as he said the last debate we had, we still laid off teachers. We didn't have level fund it, that, 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 that uh, that those that the uh, contracts and all the school department. So I'll be working with this, with uh, Kathy Smith, the superintendent, approaching the state for uh, to revamp that formula. But in the meantime, we need to do an audit with the city of Brockton to make sure we have any all the money is uncovered or we find any extra money. We can we can then shift it over to the school department and hire back some of the teachers. That's what I'll be doing. Thank you. Thank you. That was Chris McMillan. The same question now. Bill Carpenter. Two years ago when I became mayor, the local, uh, local aid to schools was $164.2 million. In my first budget, I increased that by $3.7 million to $167.9, and in my second budget, I increased it by another $4.8 million for a total of $8.5 million. Our funding for schools this year is $8.5 million above what it was two years ago. The problems with school funding are at the federal and state level. We've had race to the top run out. We've had reductions in Title I. And the Chapter 70 formula 
is for uh, state aid for education is not equitable to a gateway city like Brockton. We incur higher costs due to teaching students uh, how to learn to read and write English, special education, 80% of our kids qualify for free and reduced lunch, and we are working closely with our attorneys right now. We're waiting for the new Chapter 70 report to come out, and if we don't like it, we'll be filing suit against the state to get Brockton the money it deserves for our children. Thank you. Thank you. A lot of enthusiasm here tonight. We're listening to a political forum. The race is for the mayor of the city of Brockton. Also listening to 95.9 FM in Marshfield. South Shore's News and Information Center, and we're broadcasting live from the, Bu the Buckley Performance Center here at Massasoit. Great performance center and a very lovely audience from what I can see. The lights are so bright, I feel like I'm getting a, a tan or else in a sauna <laughs> here. But, so if I'm sweating, I'm not doing a Richard Nixon. It's just really hot under these lights. <laughs> now we're going to go to Charles Mathewson from WATD. Questions for the candidate. This is for both of you. Silver Lake no longer is the headwater of the Jones River. Brockton's use has depleted it. Fonfonta Pond has a serious algae bloom in part because of Brockton's thirst for water. The six towns to the east of us here say Brockton steals our water and sells it to Whitman. They've organized, they have political power in the legislature, they're coming to get their water back. How will you respond? Let's start with uh, Bill Carpenter. Well, they're not getting it back for starters. We have a contractual right to that water, and we've been very responsible in our use. Uh, we have today, Brockton uses less water per day than it did 10 years ago due to the conservation measures and the uh, rebuilding of a lot of the water pipes and the leak detection. So we're actually drawing less water from Silver Lake daily today than we did 10 years ago. We've also been sensitive to it during the summertime, and at peak periods, this summer, we drew a couple million gallons a day from Aquaria to take some of the pressure off of Silver Lake. But that is our primary water source. Water and sewer is the key to the future development of this city, and we own that water, and we're going to continue to use it. We'll use it responsibly, but that water and our sewer capacity is what the growth of our uh, economy will be built around here in the 21st century. Thank you. That was Mayor Bill Carpenter. And now that same question directed at Chris McMillan. Well, Charlie, we had that same question when I, uh, we had the mayoral forum. Um, the, we, we need to work with the communities, but they did, like, like the mayor had it's said. A, a slightly different question. I well, it's almost the same question. So, but anyways, we have to work with the communities out, out that, we, uh, that encompass that, the Silver Lake. That is our water. The, the mayor is correct. We do draw off it, and we have had... Uh, we are using a lot less right now than we have in past years. But we need to be also be uh, uh, you know, uh, careful of the communities that surround that, 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 that lake, that we have to make sure that we reach out. And we're not the big brother on the block. We shouldn't be, three, you know, be, th be like a thug and, and push them around. But we need that water, period. Uh, the mayor actually wanted to get rid of the query. But two years ago, I was watching the debate for two years ago. He wanted to get rid of the query from day one. He's, we still have it right now. So I'm not sure what he's talking about using the Aquaria water, but we need to help out the residents around that area. Talk to them about it. It's all about diplomat, diplomatic Five issues. Five seconds. Thank you. Thank you. Some good questions here tonight. Let's go back to Emily Reynolds with a spark. You've got another question for the candidates tonight here. City of Brockton, the race is for mayor. This question is for both candidates. Um, if the bright fields are a proven success story for Brockton, is there any plan to invest in more solar projects such as panels on public-owned buildings, um, LED street lights, any kind of plan for the future? Let's start with Chris McMillan. Uh, solar panels are great, um, they, but they're not adva as advanced as they should be right now. Um, if you look at the uh, citydata.com website, city of Brockton is number one and w average wind speed. We should be tapping into that. We should be having some type of vortexes on our public buildings, uh, getting away from the, municipal, from the electricity and saving us our money on the bills. That could be converted over to money saved, and that could be also one of the measures we can hire back our teachers. So w if you go on to citydata.com, 14.3 miles per hour average for the city of Brockton. We're number one in a lot of things here in Brockton, as far as boxing goes and, and our football teams and so on. And so on. But what, what people have uh, forgotten and missed is that we're number one in wind speed. We need to tap into that. 
We need to have some, maybe have a company come in here, build those, build those devices here in Brockton, bring and create more jobs. So that's what I would do. Thank you. Thank you. That's Chris McMillan answering that question. Now we're going to go to the incumbent, Mayor Bill Carpenter. Same question. Well, we already are developing uh, additional solar fields. We have a, a private company, Sun Edison, uh, that's been approved to put a solar field on top of the Thatcher Street landfill. Perfect site for it. It's a brown field. It can't be developed. There's no harm from the solar panels. And our share of that public-private partnership will generate between a quarter of a million and a half a million dollars per year to the city of Brockton. That's a quarter of a million and a half a million dollar per year that I don't have to take out of the taxpayer's pocket. We are also go we're going forward with converting all of the streetlights in the city to LED. We've already hired the consultant who's currently uh, doing the audit to determine exactly what we need and where it goes. But the LED lights burn 50% brighter using 50% less electricity in three and a half years, they will pay for themselves in three and a half years, and those are bulbs with a 10-year warranty. It's a great investment for the city, and it will also make the city okay. safer by making business districts and neighborhoods better well lit. Energy savings, money, and safer. Thank you. Now let's go to the Enterprise Reporter, and let's go to Ed Donga. Questions for the candidates tonight. This question is for both candidates. Um, Brockton is a very diverse community. So as mayor, how would you work to improve the relationship between city government and the city's immigrant populations? Let's start with the incumbent, Mayor Bill Carpenter. Well, I think that's been one of the hallmarks of my administration. We're already doing that. No other mayor has ever engaged the communities in this city like I have. That class of police officers, seven out of the nine, are from the city's minority communities. Community policing begins with developing a police department that looks something like the people that they represent. Uh, we have proactively sought out highly qualified candidates from all of the city's minority communities for appointments to city boards and commissions. Our boards and commissions are more diverse today than they've ever been. I've been committed to it. I've followed through. A lot of people have talked the talk about diversity. I've walked the walk. That was Mayor Bill Carpenter, the incumbent. A rousing audience here. Obviously pleased with the last answer. A lot of enthusiasm for the mayor, talking a little bit about the relationship with the minority community. Now we're going to ask the same question for Chris McMillan. Oh, how, how can I top that? Well, let me try. <laughs> Give it a shot, Chris. I will. I will. Thank you. To bring in more diversity to this city, the mayor has just been encompassing two groups, two ethnic groups. And in the last debate we had, the NAACP actually said to him, Mr. Mayor, there's more than two ethnic groups here in the city of Brockton. We need to reach out to everyone. I know the Latino community and the NAACP, they feel like they're not even wanted here. They're not, they have no representation in the city hall. So, how are you? Okay, let him finish. Well, let him finish. Well, Chris, I've never run into you at the Salisbury let Park reunion every him, September. Let him finish, there you go. Please. Well, you said you're going to take the thugs okay. and the drug dealers off. I guess you Thank brought you. them with you. Okay. Come on, we got to let folks. That's right. Folks, I'll walk gotta, the walk. We got to be able to hear what he so says. So we got to reach out to all the diverse communities, not just a, not just a few. I mean, we have to include everyone here in the city of Brockton. We want this to make a better make, make us a better city. We need to make it sure, make sure everyone has a seat at the table. Uh, the, the clergy are, are one that are very upset with this mayor. Ten seconds. That they want to be, have a seat at the table to help with the community, help with, their, with the kids, and help with these young adults. That's, thank you. Okay. Thank you. This is a great audience. Mm. Good clapping. If I ever go on community auditions, will every one of you here come to it? <laughs> you guys are great. Yeah. It's good to be enthusiastic. Let's go to Mark Lindy now. Questions for the candidates. Back in the 1990s, uh, the city was in really bad financial shape and uh, 
a financial control officer was brought in the same officer that still holds the seat today the chief financial officer without talking about personality there Chris McMillan has called for an independent audit and the City Council and the mayor rely on the CFO in order to get their information Chris why do you feel it's necessary to have an audit and mayor Carpenter why do you feel if you do that things are in good shape let's start with Chris we need an audit the CFO gives us we have actually an audit every year by a private company I want to switch that up and and have more of a pit bull type of audit that no show where the money is we rely rely heavily on the chief financial officer when he comes in front of us as I was a city councilor and we we need to make sure well we trusted that he gave us the right figures we've been a few times that the figures weren't accurate but Jay Condon did a great job back in the 90s when he 91 when he came on board and he straightened out help straighten out the city but we need to have a successor for him the Department of Revenue with their audit this this made the decision that we needed to have a successor to Jay Condon someone that's going to be able to marry him he's getting ready he's getting close to being retired so we need to have someone in there and that's the reason why we want to have an audit I want to know where the money is I want to know how much exactly how much we have so we can work with it thank you thank you that was Chris McMillan and your question for mayor Carpenter same one so the DOR financial management report of a couple years ago that Chris is referring to did make a couple made over a dozen recommendations and a couple of them apply here it suggested that we should change the outside auditor because we'd had the same auditor for too many years I did that we put it out to bid we brought in a brand new auditor last year it's been done they also did recommend a succession plan for our CFO Jay Condon we've done that we created a position of budget director in this year's budget a person's been promoted into that position and we're advertising her position in January so we have put in a succession plan to the CFO and we have changed the outside auditor because those are good financial management practices thank you that was Bill Carpenter thank you Charles Mathewson WATD questions for the candidates for both of you over the decades Brockton has tried several forms of government including way before Bernie Sanders one socialist mayor which do you favor the weak mayor strong City Council mode or the other way around and why let's start with Bill Carpenter I think an awful lot is made out of this weak council strong mayor thing the mayor's duties and responsibilities don't change we have a system of checks and balances the mayor is the CEO the mayor runs city government on a day-to-day basis just like the superintendent schools runs the school department on a day-to-day basis but we do work with in my case the City Council who holds the purse strings and I can't appropriate a dollar without going to the City Council and having that appropriation approved and having the budget approved each year so I think too much is made out of weak council strong mayor I think the system works but we are long overdue for charter reform I hope that the new City Council in January will choose to appoint a charter study committee and begin the process and we should be looking at all aspects of the charter including the two-year term for mayor which I think should be reconsidered to a four-year term for the next mayor that was Bill Carpenter same question Chris McMillan as a former city council for eight years we had a supposedly a strong council and weak mayor that does that's not true they when I was on the council we worked together as a team and that was the problem that's the thing is this a mayor is the chief finance is the CEO they do the day-to-day this look the City Council is a legislative side we create the ordinances and we approve the money that the mayor requests so I feel it's doing fine right now we just need to be able to get along with the council in order to be progressive and be proactive unfortunately right now it's a little little turmoil in there and hopefully when I when I become mayor it'll be it'll be all right we'll be able to get along we'll be able to get the job done the taxpayers money pay our salaries we need to work for the taxpayers thank you thank you Chris McMillan okay I want to change it up a little bit here now I want to go to the famous lightning round remember these are the questions that when you ask the candidates the answer is either yes or no without an explanation unless the reporter asks you specifically for one or two sentences now one or two sentences mean 
one or two sentences. It doesn't mean like endless talking, lots of commas, two sentences is two sen That's right, two sentences. I'm going to meet that baby after it. I love the comments. So Charlie Matthewson from ATD, you're an old hand with this. We've done a lot of forums together. You love the lightning round. Give us a lightning round question, and we'll work our way back down the panel. Okay. Uh, what are the top three areas of government where you could find savings? Bill? Uh, well, police, but we're not going to cut that budget. DPW uh, is one of the largest budgets. We're really saving money primarily. Oh, we're supposed to say it's one. It's lightning. One. Oh, sorry. Lightning I quick. Forgot, I, lightning forgot it was, I forgot it was <laughs> lightning round. Let me start over. Okay. <laughs> Just uh, finish the question. Information technology, DPW. I think those are the two primary. Information technology. That's kind of a lightning sort of a, you know, but anyway, you get the idea now. Chris McMillan, lightning round question. Curbing the overtime, uh, the budget right now, police departments was $300,000 more than it was this year than last year. It's a lightning round. Lightning, three words. Three words. Overtime, I agree with the DPW. And I would, I would uh, actually go do uh, the, I don't know. I don't know okay. what else the third one would be. You see why this is my favorite part of these forums? It's a whole lightning thing. I feel I like that guy be the guy on stuff. channel two. All right, next. Let's go. Mark Lindy, question. <coughs> Desal plant purchase, yes or no? Desal plant purchase, yes or no? Yes or no, Chris McMillan? No, absolutely okay, not. Okay, just yes or no? Yes. Thank you, Bill Carpenter. Lightning round question, Ed Donga. How many years should the Brockton mayoral term be? Okay, let's start with Chris McMillan. How many years? Two years. Two years, Bill? Four. Okay. Emily Reynolds from the Spark. <laughs> Lightning round question. The residency requirements in some form for city employees, good idea or bad idea? Okay. I didn't hear Could you, I, couldn't, I didn't hear that either. Uh, residency requirements in some form for city employees, good idea or bad idea? Okay. Do we start with you, Chris, this time? Good idea. Good idea or bad idea, Bill Carpenter? Good idea. Okay. <coughs> Charlie Matthewson, lightning good. round. Yes or no, is the new joint court a good idea? Let's yeah. start with Bill. Oh. Yes. <laughs> I help Chris Bobby bring it here. Of course it's yes. Just yes or no? Yes. Yes. Okay. Steve Lindy, Mark Lindy. New police headquarters, yes or no? Okay. And how to Let's start with Bill. Yes. Chris. That's, that's, that's a must, yes, absolutely. Okay. Ed Donga, lightning round question. Should Main Street return to two-way traffic, yes or no? Okay. Let's start with you, Chris. Yes. Okay. Bill? Yes, already working on it. Okay. <laughs> Emily Reynolds from the Spark, lightning round question for the candidates. Park testing over MCAS, yes or no? Did you say park testing or MCAS? Okay. Bill Carpenter, park or MCAS? MCAS. Okay. Chris McMillan, Parker, MCAS. Park. Okay. You want to squeeze in a few more quick lightning round questions? Charles Matthewson. Should the city restrict outside watering? Okay. Who do you want to start with? Chris. Chris. Not at this time, no. Okay. Bill? No. Okay. Mark Lindy? City Council on TV, yes or no? Okay. <laughs> Bill, yes or no? It's <laughs> a loaded question. <laughs> Yes or no? I'm going to go with no. Okay. Chris? Yes. Okay. Ed Donga, lightning round. Other than Rocky Marciano, who's Brockton's most famous resident? Okay. Let's start with uh, Chris. I'm going to say Marvin Hagler. Okay. Bill? Thomas Edison. Okay. <laughs> and Emily Reynolds from the Spark. Does the closing of the Pilgrim Power Plant change your stance on bringing a power plant to Brockton? Do you want that two sentences? Yes. Yes and no. Okay. Bill? Yeah, it's kind of a reverse question. So does, does the, you if you ask me if it changes my position, my position is not changed. I felt all along we need it. Okay. Chris <laughs> McMillan? Question. Doesn't change my position either. I'm against the power plant here. Okay. Anybody else for a lightning round question? Anything you have to ask? Charles? No, I think okay. we should I didn't know if that was like a secret around. radio signal that I just never <laughs> saw before. I wasn't sure if that was one. All right, I want to give you gentlemen a question, a uh, chance to ask each other a question or two. Uh, Bill Carpenter, question for 
Chris McMillan. Let's try to keep these answers under a minute. Okay. okay? Question for Chris McMillan, Mayor Bill Carpenter. Uh, Chris, you've stated, rec uh, you've stated repeatedly your opposition to the proposal for a resort casino at the fairgrounds. If you feel this is such an important issue, why didn't you cast a ballot when we had the referendum right. question? Fair. It was fair. Well, the reason why I was in the emergency room, Bill, and because of HIPAA, mm -hmm. I can't tell you what it was for, but I was in the emergency room at the, uh, at the uh, Good Sim all day. My wife was actually at the polls. I went there on my own in the morning before I cast the vote. So that's where I was all day. Thank you. Okay. Well, Chris, a question for Mayor Bill Carpenter. Mr. Mayor, I mean, I, I watched that debate with you and the former mayor, and it's deja vu, as uh, Yogi Berra said, deja vu all over again. And I know how you felt when you were asking the mayor these things, because nothing has changed in over the two years that I can see. So with that question goes, and I get it's a nice sport. Okay. During that debate, you said you're going to go in the first day with the Aquaria water and stop that contract, stop the money, save, save the residents $6 million a year. Why didn't you do that? I believe what I said was no, I, that. I have it on film. I believe what I said was I advocated that I want us to look at the purchase of the Aquaria plant. No. I did, even before I was sworn in, bring in attorneys to advise me legally on what our options are under the contract. The legal advice was universal that if we just start paying, we would be in breach of contract and we would incur additional penalties in interest over and above the payments. You're right, Chris, the Aquaria contract is a lousy deal. Mm -hmm. It's a lousy deal that we inherited and we are working hard to find an alternative deal and I feel right now with still over $100 million of payments due on Aquaria, that it, the most logical path right now is to try to acquire it so we can pay a mortgage rather than paying rent receipts. The candidates are having a chance to ask each other questions here. The city is Brockton. The race is for mayor. Bill, would you like to ask Chris McMillan a, a qu another question? Chris, over the last three months or so, I've heard an awful lot about what you're against. Could you please tell us a few things that you're for? For the, yeah, that'd be great. For the safety of our children growing up in these streets. Yeah. For, for rehiring the teachers so they can educate our kids. Yeah. Right now, our classroom size is over 35. And to be transparent to everyone here, I actually had to take my daughter out of Brockton Public Schools because of her illness, a medical illness. Okay. Now, I didn't, have to I didn't have to let anyone know speak. that, but for transparency, and you Both go right ahead. But when speak. it comes to kids first, Bill should know better. Bill? Okay. I think we have a great school system, and our kids got a great education at Brockton Public Schools. Like I said, for medical reasons, I had to take her out. That's okay. the only reason. Okay. I didn't bring it up, Chris. Oh, you I did. That. I didn't okay. bring it up. No, I understand that. But I'm being okay. transparent. That's what I'm running on, transparency and the truth. Period. Okay. Yep. I never hear the specifics as to how you're going to pay for things, but let's, let's, let's get the numbers out there correct on teacher layoffs. 42 was the number. We have 1,500 teachers, 42 positions eliminated. 11 of those positions were eliminated by consolidating classes with the B.B. Russell and the Champion, so that, that was not eliminating those positions at all. So 31 teaching positions out of 1,500 were cut in this year's budget. It's a 2% reduction in staff. Okay. We can cover it with good all management. Right. I'm going to give you both a chance. And you're going to both have a chance now to ask each other a lightning round question, but I'll give you 30 seconds to answer. You can ask each other one more question. You get 30 seconds to answer. So, uh, Bill, another question for Chris. And Chris, it's a 30-second answer. And I know these lights are hot. Uh, yep. Okay. Which way? I'm asking yep, Chris. Yes, Chris. Okay. This is the third question. I only have. Do I have one? Is the third question? Of course. I'm sorry. I just can't Never hear mind. you. Go ahead. Okay. Just go for it. I think it's been two and two. Chris, where have you been for the past two years? No. Okay. 30 seconds, please. As an eight-year city councilor, I spent a lot of time away from my family, so I've been with my family for the last two years. That's where I've been, Bill. Okay. I've been with my wife, who I've been married to for 28 years. 
and my three kids. That's where I was, Bill. Okay. We're listening to another rousing round here from the audience. A lot of fans here for both candidates tonight. That was Chris McMillan answering a question from Mayor Bill Carpenter. You're listening to 95.9 FM WATD. And now, Chris, question for Bill. And then we're going to go to our closing statements. Thank you. <coughs> Bill, with the federal grand jury investigating the Brewster contract that you, you had uh, signed, if it goes through and you're indicted, will you be stepping off as mayor? All right. All right. Let him answer. Let him answer. Oops. 30 seconds. Uh, what they should be investigating is how the prior company had a no-bid contract for 32 years. Okay. So, let him finish his question. Okay. Let him finish the question. And by the way, just for the record, I have never been contacted personally regarding any investigation. I have not been contacted. They usually don't, Bill. Okay. You know what? We are getting down to the final couple of minutes here on this political forum. As you can hear, you've got a rousing audience out of here, a lot of fans for both <laughs> candidates, strong feelings, strong passions. But you guys have really been pretty respectful. I know it's tough when you feel seriously about things to not to yell and scream. I deal with that every day in my office, trust me. So I hear you, and I appreciate everybody coming out here. You know, some of the towns we cover, they can't get anybody to run for office. So Brockton is a city of champions. You guys always have great politics. Always. Some good stuff. We're going to go to our closing statements now, and we're going to reverse the order that, of the opening statements, and that means Bill Carpenter will go first, and then Chris McMillan. You both have two minutes. It can be as short as you want, but no longer than two minutes. Please, let's start with Bill Carpenter. Well, folks, nearly 30 years ago, I moved to this city with a young family. And, you know, we raised six children here. I now have grandchildren in the city. And I'm sure, as many of you know, I've been through some tough times and I've been through some great times, but I've never for one minute regretted my decision to bring my family to Brockton. This is a great city. But the city that I inherited 22 months ago was a city in decline. Property taxes and crime going up, property values going down. That's the city of Brockton that Chris McMillan left at the end of his eight-year term as city councilor. So while some will try to say that a casino or an electric plant are the top two issues in this campaign, that's just not right. The future of the electric plant is in the hands of a federal judge, and whether a casino gets cited in Brockton or not will be decided by the Massachusetts Gaming Commission, not by the mayor. The top two issues in this campaign, the top two issues in this campaign are leadership and vision. Leadership means you can make a tough decision even though you know it's not going to be politically popular, and I've shown I'm willing to make those decisions. And I do have a vision for this city. I see Brockton as a city of opportunity, a city where, um, a city of opportunity, a city where families can own their own home, a city where people can start their own business, and a city where all of our children get a great public school education. You know, folks, this is the most important job I'll ever have in my life. I know it. And that's why I work as hard as I can every day to make this city a better place. And we've turned Brockton in the right direction. And now it's time to keep Brockton moving forward. That's why, on November 3rd, I ask for your vote for re-election as the mayor of the city of Brockton. Thank you. I'm listening to closing statements here. That was Mayor Bill Carpenter giving his final, giving his final statement tonight. We're going to move to Chris McMillan now. It's okay. Have another eardrum left. <laughs> Chris McMillan, we're going to go to your final uh, statement. Again, it can be as short as you want, well, but no longer you. than two minutes, please. Again, I want to thank you, uh, everyone here for coming out tonight. Uh, I put myself in this race because I felt the city wasn't moving in a positive direction. I could have stayed off on the sidelines like for the last two years I was with my family. I could have stayed that way. I'm passionate about this city. I was born and raised here. This city is more, higher in crime than it ever has before. The shootings are up. The murder rates are up, and that's a fact. Going, 
going door to door knocking to talk to the residents. That's their main concern. Their main concern is the fear of crime. They're afraid to go out. This is what happened two years ago when, he, when the mayor ran. It was on the same type of platform. He was going to come in here and, and, and ruin and, and uh, take all the crime out of the city of Brockton. Ladies and gentlemen, you get your vote on November 3rd. So please allow me my time. So with that said, ladies and gentlemen, I'm here because I'm passionate about the city. I have the eight years experience as a city councilor. I have the one year as a city council president. I know how to get the job done. It's not being done right now. So ladies and gentlemen, on November 3rd, I humbly ask for your vote. Thank you and have a great night. Take care. All right, we're winding up. We're winding up a political broadcast tonight. What a crowd here at the Buckley Performing Arts Center at Massasoit College. Both candidates up there. People full of passion. People talking about the issues that are important to them. And now, uh, I just want to say thank you to everybody who participated. And then we've got Charles Matthewson from ATD, Mark Lindy from BCA, Ed Donga from the Enterprise, Emily Reynolds from the Spark, Jeffrey Morrissey timing, timing us, Larry Nelson engineering, and of course uh, our own uh, Kevin Tachi who organized this. Just a quick comment here. Massasoit, they wanted to let me know the theater company presents a Christmas carol November 28th to December 13th. And folks, remember, if you don't vote, you don't have a voice. Get out there November 3rd.